Well, Carla Coppell is the vice president of the Applied Conflict Transformation Center at the United States Institute for Peace. And she joins us now uh, from Washington. Thank you uh, for being with us. So um, what do you make uh, of the current efforts uh, to get some of that desperately needed um, aid to people? It does appear uh, that the truce is, is holding in general, and that is uh, helping the humanitarian efforts. Uh, absolutely. I think our the collective global first priority has to be getting humanitarian aid to civilians who are at risk of starvation. And I think that uh, the cessation seems to be enabling us to reach uh, some of the people who are most in need. That's important. Obviously, the extent to which the cessation of, of hostilities holds and the time that it holds is something that we're going to have to look at hour by hour, because we do see those violations taking place in certain, in certain places. Uh, we mentioned earlier in that graphic uh, that uh, the United Nations wants to to try to get 150,000, uh, try to get aid to 150,000 Syrians within five uh, days. That's quite an ambitious undertaking, isn't it? It's an ambitious undertaking. At the same time, the level of need is actually tremendous. You have millions of people displaced uh, from their homes within Syria, uh, and the estimates are that there are millions in need. So while it's ambitious, we know that uh, the level of need is tremendous, uh, that the people that are uh, scattered throughout the country away from their homes are quite desperate. Uh, and so it's really important, and time is absolutely of the essence, uh, particularly when you do see the fragility of the cessation and the risk that hostilities will resume. And what is, what is, what is the greatest need um, of people there in, in terms of supplies? Obviously, uh, food and, and shelter are, are big parts of it, but what else? Well, I think there's food, there's shelter, there's blankets, uh, there's incredible medical needs. If you look at a city like Aleppo, uh, the majority of their hospitals were damaged. The vast majority of their doctors uh, are no longer there. Uh, so there's uh, important needs for medical supplies. And there's also the need for them to have a, a break in terms of the violence. Uh, and to some of the initial reports show that the decreases in bombardment are already helpful at relieving the stress within the communities. Uh, so it's the hard material, and it's also the soft side of the conflict and allowing people to have a sense of normalcy return. And there's still an incredible amount of people who, who don't, uh, who, where aid is not getting to, something like a 1.7 million in some of the hard to reach areas, which uh, the UN is, is hoping to get to by the end of, of March. Is that uh, uh, something you believe is possible? I think it's possible, although it really does depend on how the bombardment progresses or doesn't, uh, and the extent to which you're able to carve out um, safe paths to people in hard-to-reach locations. Uh, we need to remember that the cessation doesn't cover all parties, uh, and so you do have active hostilities taking place in some places. Um, and the aspiration is that if you really get a longer-term uh, reduction in violence and a longer-term ability to bring back dialogue, that that will increase the ability to reach these hard-to-reach hard to reach locations will increase the de degree of confidence uh, that they can be reached safely and will increase the ability to move large amounts of aid into, into a wider variety of locales. Good to speak with you. Carla Coppel uh, joining us there from Washington. Thanks for being with us. Now, tens of